Hello folks, I am back and this is my official end to what I call CZ month. Uh, it spanned over December, January and February. I tried to get everything done by uh, done in January, but unfortunately I was busy and so forth. So just to recap a little bit, I wanted it to be officially uh, CZ month. Uh, and I didn't mention this on my vid previous videos before, but this is the firearm that I've been shooting majority of the time for CZ month. This is my uh, CZ 75 Bull Shadow. This is one, it's, a custom, it's made by CZ's uh, Custom Shop. And I've been shooting this for quite some time for what I call CZ month. And a lot of you saw my review on the SP-01 Cajun Gunworks operator this is uh, what i had done from cajun gunworks and this was one of the firearms that i wanted for uh quote unquote cz month and i really i'm really liking this firearm i like the way that uh cajun gunworks did the work and i'm very happy with it but earlier in in january i did show you another firearm i am back and i changed location in the house because this would not get in the full frame. But uh, in December, I got my, for myself for Christmas was the CZ Bren 2 Carbine. That is this one right here. And I'm really having a lot of fun with this. Uh, and I love the CZ Bren Carbine so much that I decided to get the CZ Bren Pistol. And this is what you see here. And this is what the review is going to be on. I, I usually when I get a rifle, I also like to get the uh, little brother uh, to that particular firearm, whether it's my V7 or my V7P. So this is kind of the same deal with this here. Okay, let's start with some facts about the uh, CZ Bren uh, pistol. Uh, be advised that both of these firearms are unloaded and are safe. I'm trying to save time on the video. And I'm just going to give you some particulars. Uh, it is in caliber of 5.56. They do have a 7.62 by 39 version. Uh, this is the 8-inch version. If you know, if, if you've seen the 11-inch version, the barrel you see will stick out, looking similar to this barrel here, like a pencil neck design. So uh, this is the 8-inch version, uh, which I preferred. Uh, the magazines, uh, it came with two magazines. I don't have those uh, on the table right now, but it came with its um, magazines from CZ, and it also takes uh, regular PMAG magazines. Uh, the sighting system on here, I'm going. Uh, the sighting system on here, I'm going to try to flip these up. Sorry about the pause again. It's hard to do this with one hand, but the sighting system here. Uh, you see stock, it comes with uh, iron sights. Now, these iron sights here, I don't know if you could see it, but you can see it on the rear sight. Move this around. If you see on the rear sight, you'll see these, uh, the two dots in the rear, and they are adjustable. And right here, you'll see the dot here, if I can get this focused like I want to. But... That sighting system right there is photo uh, luminescent. Unfortunately, they cannot ship the trinium um, uh, sites that were normally uh, would be sent because of, I guess, some type of importation rule or whatever the case may be. But those that particular sighting system is pretty good, especially in low light conditions. Uh, one of the other things here is, let me give you the barrel length. The barrel length... What I mentioned before, this barrel length here is going is going to be 8.26 inches. It is a co um, cold hammer forged barrel. The weight of this particular firearm is going to be 5.4 pounds. And the overall length, the overall length is 19.9 inches, not including the brace here. The brace is something I put on uh, later on. Uh, with this particular firearm. I'll explain uh, the things I added to it. It does have ambidextrous uh, safeties. I like the way the CZ makes the their safeties. Their safeties 
come down with a slight throw here, the 45 degree angle. Uh, most uh, AR pistols and AR uh, rifles, they usually come, uh, they go straight down in the position where it's, it's flat down. Uh, and I believe that's a 180 uh, degree. So a lot, a lot of the firearms are like that, but I like this position because it gives such a little bit of a shorter throw. Now, if you look inside the trigger guard, which I had mentioned previously, uh, this is a combination bolt release and bolt lock. Even though traditionally it does have the bolt release like an AR-15 uh, right here, uh, they give you that option of using that in the in the trigger well. Now, not, a lot of people are not too keen about that because with gloved hands, they're afraid that you should not have your finger in the trigger unless you're intending to shoot. So s some people like that particular feature. I try it. I practice with it. And then I, what's really good is since I'm usually shooting at AR-15, there's this uh, bolt release right here. So it keeps me and practice with my normal AR-15 uh, uh, mechanisms, so there's not that much of a learning curve. This is a magazine release. It's an, this is uh, Ambi Controls right here. I forgot to mention that this is ambidextrous, but this is the Ambi ma uh, mag release on the left-hand side here. And flipping this over, if I can get on a better angle for you, there's your traditional mag release like on regular AR-15s. Uh, one of the things I, I like about this firearm is very compact. Uh, one of the things about it being compact is uh, they you can put on different braces. This is the SB Tactical, I believe, uh, SB3. And then they do have in the SB4, which is a little bit, uh, has a little bit thicker padding. This is adjustable, so you can move this forward and back. And one of the other uh, particular highlights of this particular firearm uh, I'm going to mention right now is the non-reciplicating uh, charging handle. So you can pull this back and lock it back. And once you load your magazine in, you can pull that back and let it go forward. Or it can just be pulled pull this back to just charge around. Or if this is locked back, like I said, this, is, this also acts as a bolt release and you would see that charging handle uh, would go forward. Also, the charging handle in this position, if you have a uh, magazine that's in and you have a round that's not uh, fully seated properly, this can be used as somewhat of a, of a uh, forward assist. Uh, one of the other things that I had questions from uh, from a lot of people, and some people sent some corrections about the carbine version, there is a slight difference. Tim from the Military Arms Channel was talking about the, the gas regulator up front here. Now, it, it, there has been a, a little bit of debate. Uh, Tim from the Military Arms Channel did, uh, did some talking about it. He was at the Czech Republic before, and he has a relationship with the, uh, with the people over there uh, from CZ, and they contacted him to make a correction. And I'm going to uh, reiterate that correction. And, and there's some people have sent me messages about uh, what is the truth about the gas regulator. Uh, on the carbine only, there are three positions here. And again, excuse me for the camera movement. There are three positions here. This is the normal position that you would normally shoot the firearm. This position right here, position two. This is a real, what you would call suppressor setting. This is a real suppressor setting. And position three just cuts it off. I'm just going to focus on uh, on on setting number two. So they consider this a real suppressor a suppressor setting. Now there was some confusion with the with the manual, and it was confirmed that the manual was not either properly informed uh, it was informing the public properly on that. So 
this is a, like I said, a real suppressor setting. So if you have a suppressor, you put your suppressor on and you would switch this over to uh, your suppressor setting. It will definitely work in the normal setting, but it, this is mainly made for your suppressor setting. He, uh, some of the confusion started because people thought this is the normal setting you see here. And as I turn this, it's in uh, setting number two. Now, this setting is what you call an adverse setting, not a suppressor setting. An adverse setting is used for, let's say, different weather conditions or maybe something is pressured wrong uh, with your ammo and you want the firearm to function properly. You put it in, uh, in setting number two and it will will enable you to, uh, let's say, shoot that particular round that's being uh, difficult with, you know, ammo comes in the different styles and sometimes uh, certain ammo is a little finicky in certain firearms. So that's what the set, this setting is uh, in setting two right here. That is for adverse uh, conditions. It is not a suppressor setting though you can put a suppressor on this and use setting one or two depending on how the gun is functioning with the particular ammo so that was a lot of the questions that was uh, coming up from a lot of people they were saying no this is a suppressor setting on 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 the pistol version the pistol version just remember it's considered an adverse setting when you're dealing with the carbine, the carbine is considered a suppressor setting for two. Okay, so long as we got that cleared up, and I hope that answers some questions that some people were asking me because I didn't know at the time myself. I I was a little bit new to this platform, so I wanted to make sure everybody understood this. Uh, I plan to put a suppressor on on both of these. This gun shoots very flat with this, uh, the carbine version shoots very flat, especially with this uh, uh, muzzle brake here. And I love this flash hider. I like the way this flash hider looks, but if I want to use a suppressor, this is going to have to come off. And I'm waiting to shoot uh, both of these suppressed to see how both of these uh, will do. Uh, like I said, I do like to get the smaller version of any rifle that I have that that's uh, made on the same platform, and I'm very happy with the with the Bren 2 right now. I'm just working on accuracy. I did some uh, shooting with it, and I'm going to try to show you those uh, uh, pictures right now. Uh, those uh, targets right now. Well, I'm not going to go through the targets of the Bren carbine because I've already shown those and did a shooting video. This was over a period of uh, of a couple days. So these were my actual first shots. I'm trying to focus in and get the uh, get my target acquisition properly. As you see, I'm a little low. So I had to work on that. Uh, this is just some long distance rapid firing. Uh, I just wanted to check out the speed. As you see, this is all over the place. So this is just nothing just to get a feel for for rapid fire i normally don't do rapid fire what i can i mean this is like really fast rapid fire just spraying and praying but normally if i'm what i call rapid fire is three shot bursts and here is the other target this is one that i was still working on focusing the uh accuracy as you see, it's off a little bit to the left. So all my shots were coming over a little bit to the to the left there. But this is taking my time and shooting. Uh, just so you know the distances, the distances were roughly about anywhere between 15 and 25 yards. Uh, right here, I'm really clamping down, trying to get some good shooting, uh, trying to get accuracy and right there I think I have it pretty much dialed in the way I want it and that is it for for the Bren 2 
pistol. And I am, like I said, I'm very happy with this this pistol. It for some reason I like shooting this a great deal. So I, I will do a comparison with this. If I did not mention, uh, I failed to mention that this is a piston driven system. That's why there is uh, this buffer tube here. This is not a buff. Uh, this is not like a AR-15 uh, platform. This is just here to hold the brace, the buffer, uh, the tube here. But it is basically a piston system. So with that said, happy shooting. Stay safe. Hashtag 2A.